let's reinstall these things so these are basically the spray cylinder walls with oil one I just clean them with compressed air. Two. Right. Three. They're all the same. This is what it seems like they are. Washing the hoses, cooling system hoses, and various things, oil dipstick, basically just serviced alternator, and a boiled hot, 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 hot water, it's boiling hot. And that's gonna remove all of the fucking oil that is there. Oh, nice. Okay, so they are all in. Now I'm just going to torque them all, not with hand obviously, but I'm just going to go through all of them. Okay, finished cleaning the parts, so it took me three hours to clean the pistons, the pump, which I still need to service, the front cover, uh, this back back seal plate or whatever you name it the AC AC pump uh, mounting bracket and as you can see I'm not only cleaning it on outside or well that's inside outside inside everything only took three hours and bunch of chemicals pack of gloves and my hands are still suffering um, Actually, actually, I like this one. And this is a power, power purple. It was very effective. Uh, also, these things were soaking for 24 hours in an actual uh, like a bucket full of uh, <clears throat> Formula 88 uh, de uh, detergent uh, decreaser, degreaser. So. Yep, so now everything is ready for disassembly, so I mean a reassembly. So I will be reassembling everything as soon as parts arrive and we'll go from there. Okay, I'm disassembling the oil pump because I heard there are a lot of bad things. If you don't, you may reassemble the engine and find out a problem. So since you're here at the engine, I'm you're trying to do everything you can. And I haven't washed it from the inside yet. As you can see, it's clean on the outside, but it may be ugly inside. Washed everything inside and dry it and then lubricate. And that should be good. And uh, lubrication, I'm going to use probably WD-40 for now. Technically, you should use gear oil, but I think WD-40 should be good. Reassembly is very easy. As you know, there is a wear on each side, so you, you choose uh, which side had uh, contact with previous surface. 
<clears throat> so if there is a line right there, as you can see, is a circle. Therefore, the side that had a circle goes in. Except in this one, you can see a little pin that I'm sure does not do anything. So you insert the round like this. Again, it's very hard to film and uh, do this. So let me do this. Okay, so now, right? So now we are ready to install the actual gear like this. And now we're going to put the cover over. But before we do, we're going to put some WD 40. Technically, it should use gear oil. Gear oil is best uh, because unlike WD-40, uh, gear oil, even seven months after you assemble it, it will still be okay. WD-40 and uh, the uh, actual ATF uh, will disintegrate and will... Okay, I cleaned the mess. It's all clean now. What else is new? So basically I ordered uh, piston rings and uh, turns out the hundred dollars I paid were just for one piston. Yeah, disappointment. So now I'm throwing back, I have to wait probably another two, three weeks or maybe a month before other pistons get here and the thing is this is a three liter so you can't get pistons for them there are plenty for 2.5 2.8 uh, 323 you know but for a three wall uh, I had to order two more from uh, one place and three more from another so I have six also the main bearings I ordered a week ago still haven't arrived. Um, the message I get from the Euro parts that it's been shipped from the actual uh, supplier. So I suppose Germany or whatever. So I don't know when I'm gonna get it. So, so far I'm doing what I can. I've messed with the clutch. I messed with the clutch pedals and so how it works also today also today also today i got ms43 use this is for i know i'm not gonna need this eventually but for now so i got this from uh 330 ci 2001 and all of its wiring for it so i don't have to mess with wiring converting back to ms43 and that's a bonus i think uh, because others they just cut wires splint them add wires i, I don't have time dealing with this uh, the clutch pedal is a problem okay so this clutch pedal has two switches right the side which is the brake that i'll have to redo take maybe from my existing because it's broken obviously right there isn't just wobbling there's nothing between the switch and the pedal itself uh also this wire is missing from my kit it just does not exist so i don't know what i'm gonna do with this one i could try to figure out I know one wire is basically uh, what I learned that there's three wires here, three wires here, two of which go to power and ground and one for signal. So I should have one signal from here and one signal from here. Uh, this tells me that uh, as you can see the way it functions when the pedal is up as it is now 
it compresses this switch and when it's down when it's down let's say when it's down it compresses this switch so <clears throat> one of the signal wires goes to EWS and the other one goes to the ECU so to demonstrate this ECU EWS uh, this is for theft protection and the, an alarm obviously and this is for the management so I suppose if I'm just I don't know actually I'm just figuring this out when the pedal is up in the up position and you don't touch it it presses on this switch so the signal wire it will make sense goes to the EWS so when it when you press it down switch disengages and sends the signal to EWS and when you press it down it sends the signal to the uh, ECU because if you think otherwise if why would you have when you press it down for it to signal uh, to the EWS and then when it's up why would you have it signal to the ECU it makes no sense so anyways uh, that's what I'm dealing with there's a lot to do I'm not sure how long it's gonna take all of this wiring and everything um, this is the brake wiring again I suppose this is a power this looks like ground thick wire and two signal wires I'm waiting for my parts to arrive and since there is really nothing to do engine disassembled I uh, can't reassemble it because I don't have parts uh, so I decided to spend some time cleaning the body and I just cleaned the hood and it's a lot of shit look at that black Just spraying everything, especially there. Look at the gunk. I feel something's dripping in my hair. I can imagine what it is. Probably not good. So it's not bad we're just gonna again trying to clean some stuff um, obviously there are no parts so the exhaust is getting cleaned and painted and that's about all I can do right now because there is nothing to do literally there is nothing to do with this car uh, I got new harness this harness is coming out as you can see all the wires are old and uh, we're gonna get a new one and of course as everything is flying up whatever I'm spraying is actually flying up in my face 
it's retarded. Oh, it's spicy out there. Music. Here we go. And I'm working under my car, hearing all of that, and I sleep like that too. That's how I live. That's my life. with the exhaust Of course, in my face. Nice and clean. I'm adding primer from one side, obviously. From sides I can.
Sorry, it's my neighbors. Obviously, it's not me. Looks good. Amazing. Okay, finally is the day when the main bearing arrived. And this is crazy because I waited a long time for this. So now this means that we can actually start assembling bottom end and uh, it's amazing I'm just so thankful for this um, that's gonna go in yeah, I'm still missing piston rings so the most I can is just install the crank which is still a process and I'm gonna make sure I do it and I'm just not gonna film obviously everything but I'm just gonna show a few steps um, this I'll just unscrew for now. I just put them here so I don't lose them. And let's begin. I basically have to make sure they're all in order. They have numbers 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 45, 45. I'm gonna rewind some video I shot and see what what order was it uh, removed and try to um, replicate it in the same order and of course I have this to measure the actual clearance you know this thing itself took two weeks to arrive yep this is the I guess parts shortage we have right now everything is sold out and for my engine, especially for the 3 liter, there is nothing available for 3 liter. There is plenty of stuff for 25, for 28, but there is nothing for 3.0. Okay, I rewind the video and I see that the first bearing was 43. Next one was 42. Next one was 39 then 41 then 40 45 and 45 so there is no really order in which you should install this as i see they're all the same and that makes sense because if you're manufacturing this why the hell would you make all of these different right another question is where like the actual where but we don't see anywhere on actual main bearings and when i was taking this apart main bearings actually looked fine i could have actually salvaged them they were that good it's very easy we just uh, proceed with this again i start with the locking side right call them tanks or whatever and you press evenly then you press on both sides and in the middle to make sure they're properly seated neither side is sticking out right so at this point uh, what i'm going to do now i'm going to lubricate all of it and place a crank and measure clearance on one of those i'm using um 75 90 just a little bit and do that way a couple of drops nothing excessive just a little bit as far as i know this isn't your main engine assembly loop but it's kind of like to support all right it's already smells like oil here the reason i'm using this is because I know they use a transmission fluid, right? but that one is actually evaporating. This is not. You can, after probably 
a year of standing this engine still good now I'm using the ultra thick engine assembly lube not a lot again just enough to give that crank spin probably more than it should be but crank will be dry I'm just gonna show process is very easy you start with this end you push it in that has a lock on you align it and then you press in and make sure all of them are even out like that take your time do not make mistakes here it's gonna cost you everything you're gonna hate yourself and I will too without jamming your fingers because it's really really easy to jam fingers here we go right so now it's in its place right and uh, I wouldn't want to try to rotate it right now because what happens is everything I placed in place will rotate with this so I want to make sure make sure nothing has rotated I'm gonna push that back in like for example this already rotated this one right Very carefully, very careful. Make sure it's all seated. Yes. If it's not, it's gonna move the bearings like it did just a little bit over here. So I'm gonna need a screwdriver to. Uh, tap it down, so sort of speaking, because it's not supposed to be that way. Very easy technique. Just take this bolt, press on both sides, and it actually clicks. Yes, it does. now it looks perfect and I can rotate it, rotate it with my fingers with the knees right but again each time you rotate you have to recheck each one of those because if you tighten it it's gonna jam one of those I bet you so what I'm doing again I'm using the bolt to press in on each side of the bearing make sure it goes in and does not stick out more than the other right okay okay I'm just gonna do some plastic gauging process and uh, we'll see I'm just gonna do one mm-hmm 
Ryan. First I'm going for 20 newton meters. Thirty seven, forty two. Forty eight, okay, fifty. Okay, so now we can unscrew this. And we're gonna see what it is. Of course. It's always hard to get them out after we install. Okay, so clearances are about thirty eight. Okay, now we're just gonna make sure again everything is nothing is sticking because we're getting ready to install all of them. So when I place them, make sure I place exactly in the center Uh, the bearings actually match thrust bearing So it's going to be very basic. When I was taking this apart, as you can see, I left some bolts in 
it's a bolts out it was done purposely that was done purposely as you can see the shiny part obviously hugged aluminum and the washer was going here And this will go like that obviously one of them will hold uh, the shield the other one will hold just this but that's not important we, we're not going to torque this too much and this is uh, this one is for the pump as I believe Of course these get loosened. This I'm just gonna go by finger tight because like I say they will be readjusted. And re tighten. When we're gonna torque this all it's just gonna be uh, used as a washer and later as support so like that this bolt was here Okay, now we're ready to, <clears throat> this time we're ready to truly torque these things are to the spec.
another one. No rush. So first we are setting it to 20. Let's do 20.1, right? Like this. We are set up for 20 and this is gonna start torquing. little by little close into 20 I have to be precise at this point because we're gonna torque it after this finally for the final time okay now 50 but we're gonna go 49 40 nine and a half twenty nine point six twenty nine point seven okay go on steady thirty four thirty seven thirty eight thirty nine forty 47.1, Alright, good. Reset. Let's go. 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49.5. Reset. like that 41 44 45 46 47 40 40 50 good all right reset so my aim is 50 42 47, 49.5, 50.
so they all are perfect and uh, it's all rotating perfectly fine as you can see with one finger it means it's beautiful and it's done finally so today is a good day <clears throat> more rings arrived only two for two more pistons so now I have uh, three out of six and I'm waiting on three more those are Mali and uh, it's aftermarket unlike the first one I bought was a actually genuine replacement uh, BMW group uh, which was also made by Mali so same manufacturer uh, let's see I, I have no idea <clears throat> to me they look exactly the same <clears throat> so the actual story behind this is that uh, it's like Dell computer for example right if you buy Dell right uh, it's a computer that is uh, made by Dell uh, but uses uh, different parts from different manufacturers and if you order let's say a hard drive from Dell computer they will first take it in and test it and then pack it back and put a label on it and but the fact is they do not produce any of the parts they use same with BMW <clears throat> same with Mercedes same with Nissan uh, they just put their name on the part uh, so these were $35 each on sale and as listed it was um, $98 but the ones that bought genuine uh, true genuine with the, that it says BMW group on there same packaging um, different box I actually did not get a box with a uh, genuine uh, piston rings uh, but uh, this package was actually a whole thing it basically wasn't cut as it's now it was a whole package and it said BMW group but the color was the same the brand is the same everything is the same and I'm about to start putting them on and see if there is any actual visible difference on the part itself <clears throat> okay so first impression of the part itself the part feels a little more greasy than the actual BMW part um, kind of a little more sticky so kind of feel harder to spread around um, harder to keep the inner ring in but I guess it has to do with something to that they use lubrication on or some sort of product and what it does after this this were made in 2020 today is 2022 after two years I guess it's hardened but I wouldn't make any sort of point or statement to this I just tell you the fact of it start with the bottom ring I'm gonna <clears throat> locate the top of it which usually has some kind of marking um, in this case is uh, actual <clears throat> it's not enough light in here but as you can see there is a number so that's the, that's gonna be the top uh, and I'm gonna start putting it in actually the bottom ring is the easiest to put in so what you do you spread it around easily just like work it like that all it is is just like a spring with a tiny little uh, wire in it that you do not want to bend so you work easily and you insert it from the bottom and pop it in then we're gonna go on B the hardest one to put in and A and C which is the easiest one like you start with A B and C and you go it's really not hard as long as you have a tool in my case I do it's a really common tool it's funny how cheap the stoves are because <clears throat> no one really needs those no one really rebuilds engines nowadays so at any auto parts store you can get this for six or five dollars really but they charge you hella a lot like let's say for a water pump hundred dollars a hundred fifty dollars because everyone knows how to do those and that's about it so let's go ahead and in what seems to be working is uh, you first put the spring in right gently compress it in with fingers right and then put the actual <clears throat> iron part over to the like to about the middle of it 
right above and then slide over the spring and uh, in the in the area of connecting make sure you don't have the um, the wire piece showing because it's probably somewhere here connecting <clears throat> and repeat everything else is standard you can google you can see youtube how to put oil rings on I'm not gonna show you this is not the point of my video again this is entertainment purely just so you can see what i'm doing i'm not gonna show you everything how i'm doing again um this is not the intent of it okay so one set is installed right um it was easy it took less than five minutes to do uh, make sure all of these gaps right here they don't align so one gap on top is here the other one is on the other side and so forth this should never align or either two of them align this will help you to avoid um, any gases passing through this will help so that's how is the best so let's get on the second one